So we're going to deep dive into some other parts of your book today that we maybe kind of brushed over in the other discussions. And like I said, I definitely recommend that people go back and check that out. Before we do, this tends to be our kind of annual uh, welfare check. We're just making sure that you're doing okay. Your heart hasn't exploded. Your scurvy hasn't gotten so much worse <laughs> after all these years of doing carnivore. How are you doing? I am doing supercalifragilisticexpialidocious. Um, you know, I, I turned 64 a couple months back. And um, with the exception of the fact that being an idiot during my early years in the gym, I completely trashed my shoulders. Um, other than that, I am more fit um, and correctly fit. And as a trainer, you know what I mean by that. Um, you know, guys that go to the gym are not necessarily correctly fit. Um, I am more correctly fit today than I've been at any point in my life. Yeah, that's amazing. How much of that do you attribute to your diet? 90%. 90%. Yeah, I've always been in the gym. I, I got home from the military in uh, what, late October of 1984. And literally days later, I, I joined, I don't think it exists anymore, Holiday Health Spa. And um, so I've been going to the gym since late 1984, and, and I'm a five to seven day a week guy and have been for, what is that, 36 years, something like that, 39 yeah. years. Um, so I've always been a gym guy. Uh, but as I mentioned a moment ago, that didn't always make me a properly fit guy. Um, but and I don't know if we talked about this in either of the, the previous two chats we've had. Uh, prior to my deciding to explore the concept of ketosis, um, I was insulin resistant mm -hmm. and I didn't know it. Um, interestingly, I, I went to three separate doctors because I, I had these symptoms, right? And I, I, couldn't, uh, I couldn't figure out what was wrong with me, but I knew something was wrong, right? So I went to three separate doctors and I gave them five symptoms, which are, ironically, the five primary symptoms of insulin resistance, which, as you know, is an epidemic in this country, right? Yes. And not one of them said, oh, you're insulin resistant. All three of them said, well, we really don't know what's wrong with you. Now, if you'd ask me a year, two years, three years, four years after that, I would have said it just speaks to... The fact that although many people, to some extent, worship MDs, uh, they're actually in reality when, when let's say, here's their knowledge of human physiology, right? And as, as people's, their own knowledge of human physiology increases, suddenly they realize that doctors are um, far less bright than the public generally gives them credit for. How's that for tactful? Um, but if you were to ask me today, why do I think they said, we don't know what's wrong with you? Um, I would give you a more cynical answer today than I would have given you several years ago. And the cynical answer today is if they say, we don't know, they know what the next step is after insulin resistance, mm. type two. Okay. And with type two, comes a whole slew of other chronic diseases. Type two is the foundation. Well, actually insulin resistance is the foundation, but as far as a real diagnosable chronic disease, type two is the foundation for all these other horrible chronic diseases from which the medical industry makes literally trillions of dollars a year. So my, my 2024 more cynical self says, I find it hard to believe that not one of the three recognized the five primary signs of insulin resistance when they said, oh, we don't know what's wrong with you. My more cynical self says they knew, but to solve the problem then would have deprived them of all the income that was to come. Like I said, my new more cynical self. <laughs> it's such a good point. And I definitely want to talk about this today. The implications of, of the information in your book and some of your later chapters where you go into all of these different industries and all the trillions of dollars and the square footage even of grocery stores, like all of these things would change if people got the information that you write about. And we can sit here and pretty much say that even though here we are banging this drum as loudly as we can and trying to get this message out far and wide. We, this information is not going to get out to everybody, unfortunately. It's going to get a, a, maybe a 
very, very, very small minority of people. And it's going to remain suppressed because of that reason, because it makes so much money. I love the point that Nina Teichel's made when we interviewed her um, a few years ago when she said, like, what is what is the nicest, newest building anywhere around you? And it's always an, an addition to a hospital. It's an add on. It's an oncology center. It's always <laughs> in the medical industry. That's where all the money is. And it's it's right in front of our faces. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's it's. And I think there's a large percentage of the American population that thinks that's great, um, that, that we're taking care of our population. Um, what they don't realize is that, and I'm not damning any of these medical corporations for meeting a need. OK, um, if I would if I was the CEO of medical corporation, I'd be meeting a need. Uh, the problem is the disinformation, and, and that's really coming out uh, from the highest levels of the United States government, CDC, uh, NIH. It's coming from Big Pharma, who the, the amount of money that they pump into media advertising, it, they control what the media is willing to say, because if they say the wrong thing, then companies such as Pfizer and others will yank their advertising money. Same thing with the processed food industry, which these days is the vast majority of all food. I mean, you walk through the grocery store aisles just as an exercise <clears throat> and you, you determine what's processed and what's whole or natural. Okay. And I, you know, I, I don't know what the actual stats would be, but just thinking through as I walk through the grocery store, it's like 97% processed food and 3% whole or natural food. Easy. Uh, and so those companies, Big Pharma, Big Med, and Big Food hold tremendous sway over what the media says. And there is a narrative. And here's the part that challenges me that I don't understand. I get that money talks. Okay? What's that old adage? Money talks, bullshit walks. I get that. Uh, but the part I, I, I struggle with, because this is a free country, right, in theory, theory and, and we have free speech, unless you're on, like, Facebook or YouTube. Um, so the part I, I struggle with is that the disinformation, okay, it's not, not disinformation. I want to call it malinformation, because it's done with malice and intent, okay? Mm. It, it, it's, it's not, well, I suppose it is disinformation, but even disinformation isn't necess doesn't necessarily carry malice with it. OK, I, I think what we're talking about here is is malinformation. There is malice intended. It, it is intended if you. If you were to take the information that, say, Big Pharma, we'll just use them as an example, take the information that they put out on health. OK, I'm going to guess somewhere in the range of 98 percent of that will make you sick. If you follow that advice, you'll be sick and you'll need their meds. Um, and of course, that being sick generally leads to a person dying years or even decades earlier than otherwise would be the case. And that's taking them away from their spouses, taking them away from their kids. If they're a business owner, it's jeopardizing the, 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 uh, the livelihoods of all the people who are employed by them. And on and on we go. Just <clears throat> all of this, these horrible implications that are consequences that befall or flow from malinformation. They know it's a lie. They know they're making people sick to get money. And we don't seem to have, and this goes to your point, we don't seem to have a way for the message to break out. That's the part that's frustrating to me in a free country, that there appears to be no way for the message to actually break out and run. 